Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Stop Club. Screaming. I know. This is what we do every really? night. You were talking nice and low. This is how we talk every day. <laughs> Jesus. And it, it wasn't coming in hot, and now you are. Well, now we are. We have a special <laughs> guest. He served eight years as the 44th President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, President Barack Obama. Never heard of him. Hey. Never heard of him. No. <laughs> you know what? I heard of y'all. <laughs> What up, y'all? It's DJ NV. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. I don't think we should do a podcast today. What? Where are you going with this? I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, you got your girls out and they all staring at me right now. I just said, let's just go upstairs and hump. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. <laughs> You're joking. Go ahead. Start, with your, start with your intro. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I was trying to get a little hump on. Fuck this podcast. But it looks like it's not going to happen. I just want to let you guys know I am the man this week. Uh, It's not because I interviewed Barack Obama, President Barack Obama. And it's not because I uh, picked up my daughter from college. Yeah, it's because you know what? No, I have no idea, actually. You know, I'm the man. No, I really don't. It's not because I made uh, Gia's eyes roll behind her back five times the other day. Four. Oh, four. <laughs> it's not because of oh, that. Oh, wait, and I did one of those myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so three and a half. Uh, it's actually you because... Just inspiration. It's actually yeah. because I found potatoes. Found potatoes. I found potatoes. If you don't know what potatoes is, you missed the uh, episode where we talked about Ray Dunn. Gia was looking for potatoes. Potatoes was a jar of nothing. Uh, oh, it's a jar that you would put potatoes in. Correct. Now, uh, potatoes is something that's hard to get for my Dunny fans out there. Uh, so if you don't know, Gia collects these things for the house. You know, some says potatoes, some says onions, uh, onions garlic, some say garlic, thyme, whatever. rosemary. But this one particular dill. one was very difficult to get. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to front. I didn't go searching for it. I went once or twice. I couldn't find it, so I bought it. Uh, I overpaid for it. So how much is potatoes in the store? Either $19.99 or $24.99. $19.99 or $24.99. I put it like this. If I calculate all the money I would spend in gas and tolls going from TJ Maxx to Home Goods, from Home Goods to TJ Maxx. To Marshalls. To Marshalls. You yeah. figure that would cost around... $211. <laughs> and that's what I spent on potatoes. Yes, he overpaid on eBay just to make his boo-boo happy. That's right. So I paid two- And typically I wouldn't be okay with that because I don't like to overpay for anything, but you'd have to understand. Potatoes, onions, and garlic are a set. I have onions and garlic and there's a spot on my counter for them and it's just missing potatoes and they were so lonely. And everybody in this house, and Ben's, and Estat, and you, <laughs> know how much I've wanted potatoes. Hey, London, come here. As uh, my baby girl, of course, you know we still don't have a nanny, so come choo-choo. there's a lot going on in this house today. I'm sure Brooklyn will be coming in here in a second. Okay. And Brooklyn doesn't have a hey, shirt hi. on. I just want to tell you guys people. that. Hi. Okay. So when I dragged you to all of those stores that look alike. Remember, yes. we would go into each store and you would say, this store looks just like the store that we were just in. <laughs> and I said, it pretty much is like the store that we were just in. It just has it a was. different name, right? Was. What was mommy looking for? So potatoes. Like, <laughs> potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get out of here. <laughs> Did you know that daddy got me potatoes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, get out of here. Yes, and right. now I'm 100%. Wait, come here, come here, come here, come here. Because without potatoes, how happy was I? 99%. I was only 99% happy. What is that? Yes. So he's, so he's a good hubby? Yes. Okay. Is he a good daddy? Yes. Okay. Get out of here, meatball. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My baby girl. But yeah, so she found, I found potatoes. So she got potatoes. She was happy. Now, how did I give you the potatoes? How did I tell you that potatoes arrived? Well, first of all, I just want to tell you, you stole all of Benz's thunder. Why? Because she was banking on finding potatoes. Mm-hmm. That's how we say it, potatoes. 
and <laughs> she had a whole unveiling plan because she knew that she was getting it. She was at the stores every single day and you killed all of that for her. And your presentation, I mean, it was just typical. Your, his presentation was typical. What, Hers what? was very elaborate. It was very, very elaborate. So what was she going to do with her presentation? I'm not going to tell you what she was going to do with her presentation, but... There's no presentation better than mine. Your presentation was very Rashawn-esque. This is my presentation. Just imagine this. Ladies, close your eyes. Fellas, cover your ears. <laughs> Just imagine you get a picture. Ding! Your phone rings. You look and there's a text message from your boo, your bae. Your bae is standing there naked with his penis inside the potatoes container covering his junk. <laughs> Take a picture and be like, happy potatoes. <laughs> happy potatoes. I thought, that was a do- I thought that was a dope way to send it to you. Yeah. He sent me a picture of the jar covering his package. Yep. Typical him, right? But nonetheless, I was like, ah! And I ran around the house looking for you. I found him. I threw my arms around him. And I gave him all the love that he deserved for overpaying for it on eBay. And mm-hmm. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. I'm I- very, very thrilled. Now... Garlic and onions have their, what is it? It's the third musketeer. The third musketeer. Yes, yes. I do think my way of being naked covering my private parts with the container of potatoes is the best way, but... Can, 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 we, can we add that picture? No. We can't? Why not? I'm not sending a picture of my junk. You, you can't see anything. All you see is your stomach and maybe your legs. My legs are too scrawny, but anyway. <laughs> but she got her potatoes, so she was very, very happy. Yeah, so you are, you are the man for that. Right. You are the man for that. And anytime he did anything that made me unhappy thereafter, he would just walk me back to the kitchen and point up to potatoes. That's right. Because right now it's in this house. It belongs in the other house, but I haven't been back to the no, other house No, we took it to the other yet. house, remember? We took it to the oh, other house Oh, you and Ben took it? Yeah, we took it to Okay, there. all right. Did it wear its seatbelt? Yes, it wore its seatbelt at the other house. All right. Sounds all right, good. so... I'm going to add a picture of potatoes just so you could see what it's about. So um, uh, the reason I'm kind of tired is because uh, I just got back from D.C. We actually drove out there to interview Barack Obama. The Breakfast Club interviewed Barack Obama. uh, Mercedes uh, actually drove me out there. uh, And she's looking for a boo. I mean, that whole drive down there was miserable. The drive down there was good. (laughs) I actually, you know, I listened to the audible, the audio, uh, audio of Barack Obama's book or the Audible. Uh, that's what you call it, right? The company that does the audio it's book audible. is called Audible. Audible, yeah. So we listened. I got a chance to listen to the book. The book was twenty nine hours, as far as him talking about it. It's seven hundred and pa- seven hundred pages. But anyway, the way down there, we listened to the book. On the way back, I realized that Ben's is really lonely and really needs a book. I mean, every love song that you could possibly imagine, we played on the way back. From Let's Get Married. All uh, the Jagged Edge. Promise. Rock, rock the Boat, I Promise. Um, she even plays Scrubs. I'm sitting in the car like, all, yo. All the Jodeci. John B. She played John B. Yes. Well, John B. only had one hit, though. That we know of, but she played that one Well, record. if we don't know about it, probably wouldn't have hit, right? Right. Play John B. Um, <laughs> every record that you could do, every soft record that you could possibly imagine. Like when I say it was a four hour ride back from DC, but it felt like eight hours. It was, it, <laughs> it was just so sad. Meet me at the altar in your white dress. I was sitting there like, oh my God. <laughs> then it was a, then the bending knee, uh, boys and men. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I was like, yo. Yeah. Cause every time that you called, there was Aaliyah, there was Black Street. There was D'Angelo. <laughs> uh, who else did you guys call me with? Um, there was a little bit of, um, oh my God, uh, Keith Sweat. Keith Sweat. So Twisted was on. Twisted. Usher. It's seven o'clock on us. Uh-huh. I'm in oh, my drop top. I, you guys Twisted called me street. twice on S- on SWV. Which one? Week. Uh, I tried to get. I tried to go to sleep one one time, and it, it just. It was just it was just too much. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so uh, hit Ben's up in her DMs because she needs a boo. But anyway. <laughs> She's been getting... Listen. Ben's has been getting hit up 
in her DMs. Don't put Ben's business I'll just have you know. Well, she ain't got no boo. So that's what I'm saying. She needs a boo. I, yeah, I don't know Christmas if is anyone, time coming. Christmas is coming up. Anyone's met her standard yet, but yeah, she's a catch. But anyway, a so. Six foot two tall glass she's of six water. Two? No. Yeah. She's, she's not six, she's six two, six two. three. She, really? No, she's six two. She's not six three. She's All right. Six but anyway, we're arguing about Ben's, but Ben's needs a boo. That's not. She's six two. But now, what I wanted to talk about was, of course, something out of Barack Obama's book. So I, you know, because of the, due to the interview, I read the whole book. I had to read the book fast, and I had to play the audio so I can, you know, really, really get it fast. And during the book, I realized, you know, when you hear so much about Barack and Michelle Obama, you hear that a great couple. They almost seem like the perfect couple, but we all know that nothing's perfect. But reading the book, you realize that she did not want him to run for office, not senator. Not uh, president, none of that. She was like, no, I do not want you to run. Even when things were going good and, you know, uh, he was gaining momentum. She was like, no, she's like, I don't want you to run. And I thought about that and I was like, damn. And, and, and you know, of course, he did run and he talked her into it. She still didn't necessarily love it. And, you know, he won the presidency and whatever it was. And that's why when people ask, you know, for her, you know, would she be running? And she's like, no, she's not running. She's not built for the politics life. She does not like it, whatever. But what made me think about it was like, damn. Could you be with somebody if they don't necessarily support or ride for the things that you want to do? Um, and I wanted to have that conversation with you, you know, because even though shout to Barack, President Barack Obama, shout to Michelle Obama. But that's difficult because I don't think I could be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't ride for me regardless of what I want to do. Right. And in the book, they talk about them having money problems and them uh, barely being able to pay their rent and pay all their bills and them having to refinance his home and get extra money to do different things. And how it, it was it was hard. It wasn't easy. It wasn't like, OK, he's the president. He's rich. Now he's filthy. But before you continue, what was the reason why? Reason why? Um, that they were having financial hardships. Well, you know, when you're running for office and running and doing all these things, you don't make a lot of money, right. you know? So they had an apartment in Chicago where she's from. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when he became senator, you know, he's also has to be back and forth from Washington, D.C. And it was very expensive. And, you know, a lot of senators, what I realized, don't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But, you know. The president doesn't make. No, it doesn't make a lot of money. Well, they His don't salary. make. Salary wise, they don't make what a person off the cuff mm -hmm. would assume that a president that would make. They make. Right. You would assume that the commander in chief and the leader of the free world would be rich. Correct. I don't I don't like to use that word, but that would be out of office, they are filthy rich though. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you would think that as the president, the country, our tax like what we pay would go in their pockets for being right. so powerful and doing the job that they do. You would just assume that they'd be rich. Yeah. And I remember um, years ago when I learned what the president's salary looked like, I was- It was like 250,000 if shocked. I remember. I, I thought it was like maybe 300,000. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly. Oh, 400,000 in salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you would assume that the president would be a millionaire, right. for instance, at least. Right, but you know, after, well, when, once they're in office, they're filthy rich. I mean, uh, President Obama, his book sold over a million copies the first day. Uh, his speaking engagements, I think he gets anywhere between two fifty dollars and $500,000 for a speaking engagement. He does 10 a year, it's over. He does. I mean, COVID shut it down, so he can't go on his book tour, but his wife went on a book tour and sold out arenas. So they do make a lot of money outside, but there was a lot of things that they couldn't. And she and did, this was, this was pre-presidency. Pre-presidency, We're talking yeah, so. about his hustle to get to that position. Right. And then the stress and then everything that goes on with being the president and, and leading up to that was just very, very difficult. So when it came to it, she didn't want, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, damn, you know, when I started DJing and I took it as a career, could I be with somebody that says, I don't want you to do this, do something else. Because that was in my cards. That's something that I wanted to do. And if you didn't necessarily believe, you know, could we still be together? You, know? you tell me. I don't know. That's that's a difficult one. And the reason I said that's a difficult one is because you're not that person. 
you, you're so supportive. I don't even know what that other side would feel like, you know, but if, or even yourself, let's say there's something that you really wanted to do and, and you wanted to jump into something and you're like, no, I don't want you to do it. You ask me my opinion. I'm like, no, you know, how would that make you feel? Or how did it make me feel? Well, let's talk about it. How did it make you feel? Um, Damn. So you hit me with the, oh, how did it make me feel? Shit. I know. I mean, we just can't speak hypothetically okay, when let's it talk was about it. actually what happened? I don't remember. Tell me. a reality. What do you mean you don't remember? I don't of remember. You remember. I don't remember what you're talking about. So break it down. Um, you never wanted me to have a career. Mm-hmm. You never wanted me to work. So anytime I brought up the idea of delving into something of interest, you shut it down. I did. Um, adamantly. And there was a thousand reasons why it wasn't a good idea or why it wouldn't work. And um, if I ask myself, how did it make me feel? If I'm being honest, I did feel unsupported, but mm-hmm. not for the sake of support. I felt as though... No, I didn't feel as though I knew why you didn't want me to work. Mm -hmm. I knew that you didn't want me around other people. (laughs) I knew that you didn't want me around men. I knew that you didn't want me to engage in anything that you felt would threaten our marriage. A lot of insecurities on my part. Um, So... I knew that if you weren't struggling with that, that you would be supportive. I think mm-hmm. that you put your needs before my needs or well, not only your that, needs though. before my desires. Not only that, though, I think. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, um, but I feel as though because I understood you and your needs have always been more important to me than my needs. That it was something that I was willing to forego for your comfortability. And we didn't need a second income. Um, So I felt that everything was fine financially. It was just something that I was, that I felt as though. I don't want to use the word needed that I wanted in my life. Um, and before mm-hmm. you say what you were going to say, like if you remember, there was a time where um, I was very interested in acting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, let's see, we lived in Montclair. Mm-hmm. So Madison was two and Logan was a baby. Mm-hmm. So we're talking 16 years ago, 15 years ago, 15 and a half years ago, actually. And, and I only remember because in the acting class, in Tracy Moore Marable's acting class, remember we had to do the vision board. Mm-hmm. And I remember on the vision board, I had pictures of London, not London, Madison and Logan at the time. But we, well, I was very interested in acting and I took a class at an acting school called Stella Adler Mm -hmm. in the city. I actually took three classes. I took one to begin with and two more subsequently, and I really enjoyed it. It's not even something that I went in thinking that I wanted a career Mm -hmm. in. I did it initially just because I really, really enjoyed it, and I was good. Mm -hmm. I was good. Um, So I enjoyed the fact that I was good at it, you know? you didn't like me being in that class. Mm -hmm. And then ironically, you decided that you wanted to take up acting Mm -hmm. as well. And I knew that you had never had an interest in acting, but that I I knew that you kind of wanted to babysit me, you know? And I took another class uh, that was held by Tracy Moore Marable and you took the class with me. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Like we had fun together and you enjoyed it and you learned that you had a talent for acting too. And you were amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the time I, I felt very, very, very unsupported. Like for instance, do you have a problem? Like, is okay that we're talking about this? Sure. Okay. Um, I remember 
one time we had to do a skit Mm -hmm. and my skit was to play a crazy person Mm -hmm. and I was trapped in a cage or whatever. And we were supposed to prepare for it. I didn't really have time to prepare for it because we had the kids and things were busy that week and I just had to wing it. Mm -hmm. So I got up and I did it and I winged it and everybody was like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. The teacher was like, that was so amazing. We left the class and we're out on the sidewalk and everybody was like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. And I felt really good. You know what I mean? And you didn't say anything to me. And I remember harboring so much resentment towards you Mm -hmm. for that for a long time because you did you never congratulated me like you never said like damn baby you're good Mm -hmm. you know um so yeah i did feel unsupported but even in that example i knew why Mm -hmm. like i always understood you and i loved you and i knew again that was just a personal thing um those were personal feelings that you dealt with so i let it go I, I learned how to let it go. Um, so can a marriage survive it? Can you get through it? I guess it depends on your personality, mm-hmm. who you are as a person, and possibly what your level of understanding is. I think it also depends on um, the reason behind it, the true reason behind it. Mm-hmm. I would say this. I would say, first of all, I apologize because uh, I thought I thought that was lame, and I thought I was a sucker for that. Thinking about it now, do you do you do you remember that? And now that we're talking about it, yeah, I do briefly. Um, yeah, I did not want you to work for a couple of reasons. One was, um, of course, I was insecure, and I felt if you were out and about, you'd probably meet somebody else. Um, two, I look at how our kids were raised, and I wouldn't want to change that for the world. You know, Madison and and Logan were raised differently than Brooklyn, Jackson, and London. You know, Madison and Logan were on your hip all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you did not go anywhere without them. So, they literally grew up with you. Like With me, with me. Like, there was no nannies. There was no anything. They grew grew up with you. And I wouldn't want to change that for the world. Mm-hmm. Like you were doing gymboree, you were doing football, you were doing basketball, you were doing baseball, you were doing all those things. And those are things that I wouldn't want to change. Uh, with Neither the, would I. With the other three. In hindsight. With the other three, we had a lot of help. Mm-hmm. We had your mother at times. We had Irma. We had so many different nannies. And although they didn't get the same attention as Madison and Jackson got, Madison, I mean, Madison and Logan. Logan um, the fact that we have no nanny now makes me feel like we're back in those times back in the day. I agree. Cause which is why I've been telling you for weeks and weeks that I love it mm-hmm. this way as well. Yeah, no, I, I do as well. But, you know, that's the one thing I don't regret, you know, although, I mean, I think you could have been an amazing actress. I think you could have been so many different things that you wanted to do that I kind of blackballed you from doing. I don't regret it in a way because I see how our kids were raised. I don't think Madison would be the way that she is if you, if you weren't there like you were. Mm-hmm. I don't think Logan would be the way that he is if you weren't there the way that you were. Um, like every day when them kids came home, they came home to mom. They came home to sitting on the edge of the bed talking to mom, telling me about mom's day. Um. And that's something that a lot of parents and a lot of kids can't even relate to. So I don't regret that. Um, And I'm kind of glad that maybe COVID happened and that we don't have a nanny because it's so easy to have help and forget that. Not forget that you have kids, but take things for granted, Mm, you know, because we were doing so many things. You know, we were on the road doing podcasts. We were doing flyaways. We were doing investments. We were traveling, like we were doing a lot, you know, taking care of home, but there were times when we were moving with COVID and no like nanny. Like working parents. Yeah, yeah. with COVID and no nanny. Now That's it's like- the life of many people. Mm-hmm. Now it's like there's so many things that we get, you know? Although it's a pain in the ass to have a foot in my neck every night when I sleep, I love it, you know? Um, last night, Madison's home from school, of course, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody coming up. Um, last night, we slept in the bed. It was me. Uh, Brooklyn, 
Gear and Madison sleeping on top of Gear, like the whole night. Like we were all four of us in the bed. Yeah, he went to pick Madison up from NYU, and they came into the room where I was laying in the bed, and Madison came and cuddled into me, and then we fell asleep like that, like me cuddling her and rubbing her back, and Brooklyn was cuddling with you, and I remember hearing Jackson come in and came to the bed because he was going to get in. Then he realized there was no spot for him. <laughs> he turned yeah, around right and went back to his room. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I, you know, those are the things that I, I enjoy, but I do feel like, damn, I didn't even think about that. Like when I thought about the Barack Obama thing and she, and she not, and Michelle Obama not necessarily supporting, I didn't think about, damn, I was like that. Yeah. When I, you just said that, I'm looking at you like. I was, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking like, I don't know if I could deal with that in a relationship. And I'm like, damn, that was you. <laughs> Yeah, and you're you. sitting there somber while I'm talking. I'm like, oh, am I striking a nerve? No, it's just, am I it's, triggering a memory that he's buried? Like, I'm sitting here having these thoughts as I'm talking about it, wondering how you're feeling. We've been married 26 years, and there's so and many we've been things. Together 26, 26 years, years, married 19. There's so many things that you forget about. And listening to Barack Obama break down his presidency in his book, and go get the book because it's, it's, it's really good. Tell them what it's called. Uh, a Promised Land. Um, but breaking it down, you, it's like, it, it made me think about so many different things of, in our relationship. What? Just everything we've been to. Like when, when I read his book, when we drove to DC, uh, the interview was like two o'clock the next day. So I had a chance to list, lay in the hotel room by myself and just think no kids, no phone. And I just and got, you, you'd been listening for two days prior. Yeah. Like we were cleaning the house and he's mopping with his ear pods mm -hmm. in listening to mm -hmm. the audiobook. Uh -huh. But it made me think about because what one thing Barack Obama does which is I want to say is annoying but it's annoying is he details everything. Oh, I I'm, I'm going to love that book. So he's like, uh, so for instance, you know Estad is the camera guy, right? So he'll be like Estad 6 foot 3. Can't play basketball for a lick. <laughs> Black t-shirt. Black sweatpants. Curly hair. Curly hair. <laughs> Light eyes. Light eyes. Uh, furry. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. And white socks. Oh, not to forget. 142 pounds. 142 pounds. Am I close? How much do you weigh? Well, 165. 165. 166. Like he detailed, like he spent, he'll spend five minutes breaking down what S.I. looked like. You'd be like, I'm a, I, I don't need to know that much, but. That's what he did. But when he did that, I started, I started sitting back and just started thinking about everything. Like, because life moves so fast sometimes. Mm -hmm. Myself, I don't necessarily remember the past. Which is one extremely interesting characteristic about you. Mm -hmm. The fact that you don't remember much of the past, the way that you block things out intentionally and unintentionally. And your lack of nostalgia mm -hmm. is like almost alarming. I cannot even come to grips with the fact that you don't experience nostalgia the way that I experience mm -hmm. nostalgia and way the way that I believe most human beings experience nostalgia. Like I'll hear a song from 1994 and I'll be taken back to that exact moment in time the first time I heard the song, what I was doing, what I was wearing, what my hairstyle was, how messed up my eyebrows were, um, <laughs> and how that song made me feel. I can smell something and it bring back the same memories. Mm -hmm. And it can make you feel a dose of happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember everything about that point in time and it triggers you and it's so special. It's a special thing that we human beings have the privilege to experience. And you don't get that. Mm -hmm. You don't get that. I remember, no, you I never did. I remember being young, being teenagers and asking you about like nostalgic experiences. And you're like, yeah, no. I'm like, this song doesn't make you feel anything. You're like, no. I'm like, what do you think of when you hear this song? And you'll say, what? It's a biggie song. You yeah, know, I mean, like yeah, and I, I mean, and I and I, think, I like it. I think it that's because so I, I was always chasing the bag, you know, and that's why you know today we were talking earlier that it knocked out your senses. 
No, you just don't think about it. It's like, no, you got to think from, from a that young, early it. age, I've been chasing something, mm-hmm. right? Chasing success. Even from, from a, a young kid, I always wanted something. So sometimes it's like, I never sat back and just enjoyed. Like when we were talking earlier today, I was like, yo, you know, in 10 years, I'm done. Yeah. And the reason I said it, I'm done is because I kind of just want to sit back and enjoy life. Right. Like, I feel like I ran so much and I did so much and I continue to chase and I want what's next. And I got to do this and I got to do that. When do I just sit back and say, you know what? I'm going to sit outside and just sit there and watch the birds fly or sit on the beach and just watch people walk by Mm -hmm. or have a, a glass of wine or whatever it may be and just relax. I just never relax. Right. Since the time I was, I don't even know how long, a teenager, I've been running, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm sitting back and I'm looking at everything that we own, whether it's our cars, our homes, our kids, everything that we have. And I'm like, do I really enjoy it? Do you? No. I don't even think about it. Like, I'm looking at this mirror right there, like that mirror right there. I don't even know where that fucking mirror came from. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how it got there. I never looked at it. It's just here. I don't even enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I just want to start enjoying the fruits of my labor. Take a right. step back and say, you know what? I'm just going to take a step back and just enjoy shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I, was, I was the other day, I'm looking out the window at the backyard and I'm like, I might have used a jacuzzi maybe three times. We've been in this house 15 years. 14 years. 14 years. And I used a jacuzzi three times. You know? We have a movie theater downstairs. I think I might have moved I, in 14 years. I think I might have moved, used it maybe five times. Maybe. If you use it five times, I used it twice. You know, um, and these are things that I want to start enjoying. Like even the, even the pandemic, like I have an office here. The mm-hmm. only reason I use the office is because of the pandemic. Right. If, if there was no pandemic, I don't think I ever walked in there. <laughs> you never went in the office. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it was the office was just there to look nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And these are the things I want to start doing. Start enjoying life. Like start doing corny shit. Mm-hmm. Taking a walk down the block and walking back with my holding you and just talking about what's going on in the world. Right. Like that's what I want to start doing. And I don't know how I got here, but that's what I want to start doing. You were talking about um, things in the book that made you think about your life. Yeah. So I so reflect. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I, I seen how he detailed things and I just sat back and I just remembered. What came to my mind is me and you in that Con Edison blue caravan and us driving. And we were driving to Roosevelt Field, which is a mall in Long Island. And I just remember how good it felt to be listening to music and you rubbing the back of my head. I don't remember what the conversation was. But when I was laying in that bed in D.C., I felt you rubbing the back of my head and it felt good. I was like, I want to start going through pictures and just start remembering all the stuff that we did. And all the things that we've been through and the vacations and the cruises cruises. and the stupid stuff that we did, whether it was Uh zip lining. I mean, us us dressing alike at 15 and 16 with our matching um, Tommy Hilfiger Hilfiger rugby and guest farmers, matching socks, matching polo boots. Us dressed up like sumo wrestlers fighting each other at great adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the things that I want to get back. I want to get to because I just. It's like those are things that I just don't remember. I pushed out to run and I'm like, I want to continue to, to, to really enjoy those things. And I want to settle into everything that made our life special together. Mm-hmm. But, that, but that's what I want to do. So like I said, I apologize for not pushing you and uh, being supportive when there's things in this life that you wanted to do and being a lame and a sucker and 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 using other excuses for myself being lame with my own insecurities. Um, and I'm appreciative that you stayed with my bum ass for, for all those times. But, you know, I want to say thank you. That was a choice um, for me. I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And I owned what it was. Mm-hmm. And if I wanted to push forward. I could have done that without your support. Of course. Um, if there was anything that I wanted to chase personally, I could have done it without your support. Mm-hmm. I chose not to. 
because for me, it was the better decision for us because you've always been my priority aside mm -hmm. from the kids. So you didn't back me into a corner. You didn't force me to not follow my dreams. That's not what we're talking about. We're just having a simple conversation about support. All right, absolutely. Right? So how do you think that you would have handled it if I wasn't supportive of you? I, I don't or if I'll, I encourage you to do the opposite? Because there's, there, there's, there, there's a difference. There's a lack of support, which is where you um, don't show interest. You choose not to motivate. And then there is um, a situation where it can be taken a step further where you actually discourage mm -hmm. a person from chasing their dreams. So one is like more of like an absentee approach mm -hmm. and one is more of a very, very present okay. approach. Well, the absentee approach, I don't think I could deal with. I'll be honest with you. I don't think it would work Which means out. you definitely can't deal with the... Uh, the more active. No, the active approach I could I could agree. Me discourage, I could with, yeah. discouraging you? Because I whatever when you say something to me, I, I I really listen. You know, so if you say, hey babe, DJ and I don't think it's gonna be a thing of the past. I don't think it's gonna be a way to support our family. I think we should go into another you should go into another direction, I would have listened. Because I appreciate your opinion. Um so that wouldn't have been a difficult thing because mm. I would have I want to listen to what you said because I know that you were there for my best interest and not, and that's it. Okay. Now the disinteresting, I couldn't have been able to do that ah, because I, I would have mm -hmm. thought it was, she's just not interested in who I am or what I want to do. And I don't think that would have worked. I don't, I don't think we would have made it past whatever, whatever it was. Um, but if you felt a different way, I think that that, that would have been nothing because I, I, I listened to what you say, even I mean, you know the story of me being on Hot 97 and going to Power 105 and me not thinking it was a great idea and me being scared. They not the story. You should talk about it. Well, I was on, of course, Hot 97. And um, I got an opportunity to go to Power 105 one where I am now doing a breakfast club. And I didn't want to go. At the time, Power 105 was a, was a sinking ship. Nobody was really fucking with it. It was the second tier station. Hot 97 was the heritage station, so everybody knew Hot and um, I was scared. I wasn't going to go. I was going to stay at hot. And at hot, I felt there was a glass ceiling. There was nowhere for me to go, but I felt comfort. It's kind of like um, one of your favorite, your favorite player leaves his team to go to try to do his thing at another team. Like I'm trying to think of a player that would be the perfect example. Uh, it would probably have to be, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I did that. I left. I left the team. I left the winning team to go to another team that I don't know what was going to happen. And Gia talked me into it and was like, no, I think you're going to do great. I uh, you know, and without that conversation, I wouldn't have left and there would be no breakfast club, you know, would be no breakfast club. Well, definitely no breakfast club with me on it. But, mm. so with that being said, you, you mentioned that you couldn't deal with someone that seemed disinterested right. in what it is. Now, let's just say that I was more silent and I was more um, discouraging you because, no, you know, let's say that I wasn't more silent because we're using Barack and Michelle mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you know the reason why we're even having the conversation she was anti um because why um she felt like she didn't want the stress and also she didn't want her family in public's eye uh she she knew that him running for president or senator that their their lives would be scrutinized and you know flipped upside down and everything. And she just didn't want that. She didn't want to deal with that stress. She didn't want to deal with the mess and she just didn't want to go through it. So from what you were able to gather, why did he go forward and how that, how did that affect them? I think he felt like, honestly, um, I think he felt like he had to, I think he felt like he had no choice. Like the world was pushing him in that direction. It's like sometimes you see something, no, no matter, it's like it was, it's, it's just in your cards. Mm -hmm. Like this is what, whether you want to do it or not, God is making you do it. 
This is your destiny. This is your destiny. And I think for him, that was his destiny. Okay. So how did that affect their relationship? The fact that she adamantly did not want him to take that path. He said it was difficult. He decided to do it anyway. He said it was difficult. He said there was a lot of arguments and, and problems, but he said it never got disrespectful. Mm-hmm. He said it wasn't like she wild on him or screamed or, you know, to, you know, called him a name or he called her a name. He said he never got there. And he said what, hap- what helped the most was uh, her mother, his mother-in-law. And he says she was able to talk, talk her off the ledge a lot of times and basically put out there, this is, you know, this is something big. This is his destiny. And that's how it was to be. But, you know, same thing. You know, with our relationship, you helped me so much. And it was your mother when other people denied it was you and your mother that basically patted me on the back. and was like, keep going. You know, this mm-hmm. is your destiny. Well, in their situation, she had good reason mm-hmm. to not be supportive. All right. Well, hold on one second. We have to uh, pause for the cause because there's a baby crying. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Um, Sorry about that. You seen Gia run upstairs, so what happened upstairs? I didn't move, because they've they been fighting all day long, so I was like, I'll let you take it. <laughs> no, in. they weren't. That wasn't a, a, a bleeding cry. No, they weren't actually fighting. They were playing, mm-hmm. and Brooklyn accidentally kicked Jackson in the eye. So his uh, eye is red right now. I presume it's probably going to be purple tomorrow. He's definitely going to have a shiner <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, but he was beside himself, as you guys probably were able to hear. But I took care of him. I gave him some mommy magic and kissed his eye and rubbed him and made him feel like a champ again. So I don't know. I think we should put Brooklyn in boxing or football or kickball. It was an accident. Or soccer. But there's and then, a, then she was bawling. There's, there's always a million and one accidents. There's always a million and one accidents, and she's usually the one that's giving out the accident. <laughs> All the time. She's, and then she's crying she's because she made somebody else cry. Yeah, but like mm-hmm. she's, my dad says all the time, like, Brooklyn, be careful because Jackson's going to beat you up one day. And she's like, ah, whatever, I'll beat him up. But mm-hmm. he is such a bully. And she was bawling because she hurt him. She was so sad. Aww. And I had one on one leg and the other on the other leg and I'm bouncing both legs. But mm-hmm. they really respond to the whole mommy magic thing. They're actually like firm believers. Madison and Logan used to be too, like, a little bit of mommy magic and mommy magic makes everything feel okay i do a little daddy magic give me a break you're such a biter you bite off of everything that's yeah, actually you bite everything daddy magic is why the, can't you just have your own stuff why I can't do. you make up your own cool stuff I got in this daddy, house? Magic. The daddy magic is rainbow candy and that wins all the time yeah but if i have mommy magic why don't you call your special stuff something else like why do you walk around like, i have daddy magic like make up your own stuff i mean uh, i do you right i got daddy magic but it's just not for the kids <laughs> Can we go back to what we were talking about before? You're going to get some of this daddy magic tonight. I'm sure I will. I didn't say all of it. I said some of it. Just some of it? What's some of it going to do for me? I'm just going to stick the tip. I'm just going to stick the tip. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> and that's it. That's all you get. So getting back to what we were talking about before, uh-huh. um, what there was something that you said that mm-hmm. reminded me of a conversation that we had earlier. Which was? I'm going to connect the dots for you. Okay. So you... Ultimately said that even though Barack and Michelle disagreed about him running for the presidency. Correct. They were never disrespectful. That's what he said. He said, you know, because I asked, said, um, did it ever go too far as far as the relationship, meaning divorce? He said it was, they thought about it. They thought about po- po- possibly going in different directions, but the problems never got disrespectful. Hmm. So it reminded me of a conversation that we had earlier today. So we disagreed about something. What it was is insignificant. Mm-hmm. It's really important to mention um, this morning. And you called me back about maybe five minutes after we hung up and you said something. Mm-hmm. So do you remember? Yeah, I said I won the argument and now later on tonight you have to lick my... Stop it, Rashawn. <laughs> Can you be serious for a second? All right. I went, I went this whole podcast without making a sexual... No, I think you did make... Yes, you did. You started it, I think, with potatoes. But that was truth. I stuck my penis in the potatoes thing, but that was the truth. But I Sean. like I went for like 50 minutes without making... Being overtly sexually inappropriate? Yes, you went maybe 33 minutes without being overtly sexually inappropriate. See, that's your problem. 
I really now brothers I, I try to make a change, problem. and now all of a sudden, oh, you went like it's not good enough. It's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, no, I mean, I just think that's great when, when you when you could be in a relationship Hello, and you can disagree. You're talking about you called me back. I'm about to tell you. Yeah, but I think it was great that we could be in a the reason I called is is. You know, for myself, when we got into a disagreement, I would usually have an ego. And no matter what, if I was right or wrong, if I felt I would do whatever it takes to win the argument. And today we didn't do that. We had a conversation. I listened to your side. You listened to my side. And we tried to meet in the middle. And I just called and said, I love having a conversation like that. You know what I mean? Because usually it's ego. You know, I'll be like, yo, you are wearing purple right now, not pink. And you'd be like, well, that's pink. And I'd be like, well, you know, purple has a tint of pink. So that really means it's purple and pink, but basically to have a conversation and not try to win an uh, argument, it just felt good because I got off the phone not feeling like I won. I felt like, oh, well, we tried well, to work it out. Well, you wouldn't typically feel as though you won. Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. Not really. Yes, I would. Yeah, like never, actually. Like all the time? Like never, ever. Like, like it's never happened. You've never gotten time. off the phone and actually felt like you won <laughs> an argument. Like, like you've gotten off the phone and felt defeated. the time. <laughs> So like not all true. the time. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I don't like lies. But anyway, <laughs> no, but for real. But like, you know, it just felt good to get off the phone and, and just be like, wow, we just had a great conversation. But we didn't agree, but we tried to get to the bottom of things and it just felt good. And I just wanted to be like, damn, I wish I would have done this a long time ago in our relationship. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times I tried to win and I just thought that was a great conversation earlier today. Yeah, but it was nice. You called me back and said, thank you. And I was like, oh, like, that's so sweet. Like, it's a really nice sign of maturity mm-hmm. on your part. You know, it's nice to see um, even after, like you mentioned earlier, being together for 26 years, mm-hmm. there's still growing to do. Absolutely. And there's still, you know, achievements to be made within our relationship. Like you can always get better and find better ways and more effective ways, more loving ways, more considerate ways to do things and get to the bottom of things. So I appreciate you. For I appreciate that. you. I appreciate you for appreciating that. Mm. Yes. I love you. I love you too. Tell me what to sleep. I'm tired now. <laughs> you look tired. I'm tired. Straight from DC. Tired. You look tired. Oh, oh, but muster up some energy because we have to get to an email. No, we're done. This is a wrap. This is no, it's Thanksgiving. We got no. a lot. We got to run down Thanksgiving. No, that's it. What do you mean we have to run down Thanksgiving? Yeah, I mean Thanksgiving is this week, so I want to say Happy Thanksgiving no, no, to no, no, everybody. Don't, 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 don't start with <laughs> with the Happy Thanksgiving wrap up. No, that is not going to cut. Next it. week we could do a full thing. Of emails. No, no, we're doing a full thing today. Don't start with Maybe. me. I'm no, tired. Well, let yeah, me finish, no, finish you're this. Have to, you're gonna have to get, get Happy through it. Thanksgiving to everybody. Hopefully, you guys are being safe. What are we doing for Thanksgiving, baby? Because I have no idea. You can continue to have no idea. Can you can you grab us that blue folder so we, he can pull out an email? There's can you no see blue what folder. he's trying to do right now? It's a lot. We're, we're over Rashawn, 40 minutes, baby. It doesn't matter for over 40 minutes. We could do all, like. Why don't we promise people emails next week? We do all the no, emails next week. We, Let's no, talk about Thanksgiving. I asked you. Okay, let me tell you how this works, okay? I would say nine and a half times out of 10, I have no idea what the email is. Rashawn doesn't like to share the email with me because when we read it on camera, he likes to get my complete un- unadulterated opinion without any preconceived ideas or thoughts. He doesn't like to give me time to think about anything at all. So when you guys hear it is when I hear it. The only time that I hear it before you guys is if it's a DM that I happen to see. If we pull it out of my DMs. So there's a blue folder that Ben's puts together, sometimes along with Rashawn, that has a different emails. And before this podcast started, I said, you have your blue folder? He said, yes. I said, did you choose the emails? He said, yes. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, are they good? He said, yes. I said, am I going to like them? He said, yes. He said, don't worry. I got this. Um, Esther, am I lying? Exactly. I am not lying. He said he got this. So don't you dare get to the end of the podcast, talk about I'm tired and I don't want to do an email because I don't want to fight you in front of these people. Oh boy. All right. Yes. So Esad is kindly walking over to the blue folder, it's not blue, it's which red. is now red. It's always you been. You switched the folders up on it's me. It's always been that way. Mm-hmm. See, look at this. We disagree. 
But look at how nice and respectful this is ending. You're was, actually doing what you said that you were I was, going to do. I was going to lick your butt, but I ain't licking your butt. I'll now. pass on that tonight. I'm good, actually. I'm actually good. Thank you. You might actually be doing me a favor. Thank you. Why? You got a dirty butt? No, that would be doing you a favor. Oh. <laughs> If I forfeited your participation in that. All right. Hello. Now, hold on. Let me just make sure. Did you look at the email before you're reading it? Or is this the first time you're reading it, too? No. Wait, wait, Listen, what? What is it? I read it before. Here we go. Promise. No, I don't promise. See? You're a dirty, dirty liar. I didn't promise. Hello, Gia and Envy. My name is Anonymous. First of all, let me say that I love you, too, and my relationship I myself have been in a relationship with my kid's father since we were 15 and 16. Now we're 33 and 34 with four children. Everything is going great as of now. We have been through hell and back, cheating, etc. But never parted. Now we're older and settled. Everything is great. The only problem is our sex life used to be great, but for the last couple of months, it hasn't been able. He hasn't been able to perform. I literally cannot give him head because sex because he'll nut. What? 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 You didn't read this before. Let me read it. See? But See? never. That's how you catch him. But ne- no, because it's, it's reading. I, I don't remember reading it. It was last week. But never parted. Now we're older and settled. Everything is great. The only problem is our sex life. Used to be great, but for the last couple of months, he hasn't been able to perform. I literally cannot give him head before sex because he'll nut and it'll be over. And without the head, he sticks it in and pumps twice and it's really over. It's so it's re- not great either way. Right. It's really frustrating. We have tried pills and it doesn't work. And and I don't know what to do, but I love him. He says, really. I love him dearly. Oh, no, I love him. Really don't want anyone else, but just not satisfied at all. I swear to God, it's not me reading. It's the way it's written. I swear. I don't know what to do, but I love him. Really don't want anyone else, but just not satisfied at all. And he's a nose. That's what it says. And he's a nose. It's so. He tries to avoid it at times. And so, I... And so he knows it so. He tries to avoid it at times. I'm reading it. And I'm just clarifying because you got me all messed up. I have to clarify it for myself so I can no. understand. And I do the same. So it's kind of taking over our bedroom chemistry. There's definitely no cheating on either one of our parts right now and haven't been in years. Help. Yes, Envy. I love you so much. Here we go. P.S. Envy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, now read what she actually wrote. I love you so much. At night, at times, I close my eyes. And when I'm with my husband, I think of you. I know this is disrespectful to your wife, but I'm just being honest. You're and I know in and, and this podcast, everything is all about honesty. Could you do me one favor? Can you please show me your chest one time? <laughs> Show them that nipple with the extra long hair on the right one. Oh my gosh! And your feet turn me on so <laughs> much. A really long straggler. <laughs> I could wrap it around my finger and. Gia, yeah. please. If my husband can't make me nut, can I borrow envy just to look at him? I would love to see that penis inside that potato jar. Come on, are you jar. serious? <laughs> can you just read the two sentences that's there? P.S. Envy. He's just, give it to me. It says, just give it to me. Just give it to me. No. Just give it to me. Let's go. Thank you. That's all I said. No, I said P.S. Envy. What? No, just a P.S. about some tips about investing. We have saved thousands <laughs> of dollars. We want to invest, but we don't know what to do. Uh, we want to get ourselves, you know, and our four children out of the hood help. Thank you. Okay. So you're the one out of the two of us with the penis. What do you think? Uh, if you want to invest, what I would Come do is- Come on, Rashawn. What? Let's go. Now, but on the investment, go to auction.com or hubzoo.com. Look for abandoned houses in your area. Look and see what they're going for. Look at the values of the houses in the area and start looking like that. If you're a first time home buyer, you can get uh, a loan where you only have to put down 3.5%. And a lot of times they have grants right now that'll take care of your closing costs. So definitely look to that. Use your Google, use your computer and good luck. Now, as far as the sex life, well, I don't, you said your, your husband is 33, 34 years old. There could be a lot of things. First and foremost, I would go to the doctor. Um, and see what's going on with the penis side. With the what? Penis. Uh, obviously something is wrong and it could be a, a host of things. There could be so many different things. It could be stress. It could be, um, maybe there's a problem down there. Uh, it could be a lot. Um, and we are all not doctors. I know a lot of times we try to fix things. There's so many different remedies. 
Uh, some people try uh, cognac and Heineken. Some people use gas station pills. I knew the gas station pills was going to come out of your mouth. I mean, these are the things people use. I thought use. that was going to be the first thing that you said. I've been seeing commercials for Blue Chews for the longest time. Blue but Chews? I, What's yeah. that? Blue Chews. I, I've seen it all the time on TV when you watch TV. And I, they're like, Blue Chews. Go take a Blue Chew. Blue Chew? What's Blue it Chew? supposed to do? I guess it's like a Viagra or oh, okay. a Levitra. Then there's Tiger Bone that people use. Um, some people think that Is Red that Bull works. that a Jamaican works. thing? Yeah. Some people think that uh, Red Bull works. Uh, there's so many different things that you can try and enhance, but none of those things can fix the problem. And, and the thing is, you have to try to fix the problem. And fixing the problem is going to see a doctor. What kind of urologist? A urologist. Go see a urologist and check out what's going on. There might be something else there. I mean, there might be signs of problems. There might be signs of, I don't want to say it, but maybe cancer. You just don't know. Or it could be something, something small and, and stupid that a doctor could take out and really, really test. Um, I'm a little confused, though, so maybe you can clear it up based on the email. Um, she said that if she goes down on him, mm -hmm. that he finishes immediately and that kills any opportunity for having sex, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly he's achieving an erection. Oh, I didn't read that all part. Excuse me? The reason that he said, the reason I... I the reason I said that is he said he's, oh, I guess I should have read it. He says it's really frustrating. We have tried pills and it doesn't work. I don't know what to do. But he, like you said, she said that he comes fast. Right. That seemed to be the problem. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's taking pills to last longer. Right. So I don't think he has a problem achieving mm, an erection. Right. I think he has a problem lasting. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you fix that one. I mean... I mean, you should feel flattered. Your head's so good, nigga, come in two seconds. That's, I mean, when you feel flattered? No. Really? I, I really, I really. I mean, I understand where you're going with that. I really don't know. You, you want to enjoy the experience. So if it ends prematurely, then there's not that much enjoyment to be had. Yeah, but I mean, I get, I mean, he, he can't control it. He's turned on so much. He nuts fast. Like that, that's usually a good thing. I mean, I, I tell you, all right, since we're being honest, right? When Gia and I um, used to have sex, and I would about to nut, I would think of the worst thing in the world in my mind, so I would nut. Remember, I used to tell you that. No, don't don't say what you used to think. Of. I'm not gonna say that, but that's what I would think about, and that would stop me from coming. It's just something that I would use in my head because what? What's so funny? Continue. What's so funny? Nothing. Go ahead. So that's what I would do. And as stupid as it sounds, it would work. So right when I would reach, about to reach an orgasm, and I didn't want to reach an orgasm fast, I would think of this and it would bring me down. <laughs> and we're laughing because she knows I'm telling the truth, but it would work. <laughs> um, outside of that, I really don't know. I, I mean, I really didn't, I, I, I don't, oh, what, what do you suggest? Okay. S thought just threw on the phone. I know what premature ejaculation is, bro. Here's a definition of premature ejaculation. Okay, it says remedies. Okay, good job. Oh, S thought just Googled so premature remedies, ejac remedies. He had this in his he had this in his phone already. So <laughs> for premature so premature ejaculation the goes page wasn't factors. closed out. Hot huh, S dot. <laughs> so premature ejaculation. They say stress, which I said depression, guilt. Relationship problems, lack of confidence of poor body image, concern mm -hmm. over your sexual performance, and negative feelings about the idea of sex. Okay. Um, so this is for uh, premature ejaculation, yeah. So maybe, maybe those are some of the things. Um, Anxiety over poor body image is a huge thing. Right. You, you know, um, a huge thing for men and women alike. I gained a lot of weight um, a while ago and I was up like to 190 something. I was at the highest I ever been. 196. 196, 197. And when I was at that weight, I felt, and I hate looking at pictures because they have breakfast club pictures about it all the time. And I hated that weight and I hated it because I didn't feel secure. I felt fat. I felt overweight. I didn't like taking my shirt off. I didn't feel sexy. I didn't want to have sex with my wife because I didn't feel sexy. I'm looking at her. I'm like, damn, she's sexy, but I'm looking at myself and look like a fat fuck. So I didn't feel sexy, and I my sex game wasn't up. 
Um, I don't know if your husband is overweight. Maybe he feels the same way. Maybe it is the stress, especially COVID's hit right now. Maybe he's having, you know, job problems and things like that. It could be a combination of a multitude of mm -hmm. these things. So those are the things that you should definitely talk about and maybe go see. Like you said, I would still go to urologist and see what's going on. But those are some of the things that you should really think about. I know when I was at that time, when I was at the highest weight, and this was last year, two years ago. Last year. And I was at like 197. I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel sexy. You know what I mean? Um, so can you, can you walk through? This is a little bit of a left, but I think it's kind of important. Can you walk through what will go through your mind pre-intimacy? Or um, during intimacy, because I think, and this would help, I think, a lot of men and women, because I know that there's so many people that look at themselves and aren't happy with what they see, and it is a thorn in the side of intimacy because you're likely to not feel the confidence to walk around naked. You may want to have sex in the dark because you don't want to be seen fully. Mm -hmm. um, you try to maybe maintain different positions that might be flattering to your body. Um, you're so concentrated possibly on what the other person is thinking, if the other person is finding you attractive, if they're concentrating on that mm -hmm. role or that cellulite or that whatever that it disables you from really fully immersing yourself in the sexual activity that you're engaged in. You can't really connect because you're so preoccupied with your own self image. And I'm going to talk about you really quick. Mm -hmm. And this is another slight left, but I feel like what you were going through was a little bit of body dysmorphia, which is when what you see in the mirror isn't what other people see when they look at you. For you to even use the F word when you're talking about your appearance is like beyond me. No, it's not. because you It's gotta, beyond me. No, it's not. No. You got to think. It, it, that I weighed, is untrue. It's not the truth. I weighed a certain amount for all my life. 175 the most. Maybe I would go up to 178. So now... And I'm not a person that would, at the time, check the scale like that. I just, you know, my metabolism would go. I would work out, but it would be it. Uh, I don't even remember what time it was. I don't even remember what I was doing in my life, what, what I was eating. Obviously, it was disgusting. And um, my body weight got about, I think it was over 196. I think like 197, 198. And it was the biggest I've ever been. And I can see it. I can see it in my face. I can see it in my cheeks. I can see it in my stomach. I had a fupa. Um, that's what it's called, right? Only if you have a vagina, but okay. <laughs> oh, fat up a pussy area. I didn't have that. What's the thing with your, your stomach, <laughs> where your stomach hangs over your shit? It's um, uh, a tire. A muffin top. Muffin. I had a muffin. A muffin top. I had a muffin top. <laughs> and I, spent, I had all that. And I, and I hated the way it looked. Envy reflects on his fupa. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I didn't like tricks didn't, and tips to get rid of his fupa. I, I didn't like it. You know, I, it, it felt uncomfortable. I, I hated. But this is the point that I I'm hated making. going. I hated getting naked. I hated you touching me because I felt like you touched me. All I felt was you touching my fat. I, I hated walking past the mirror. I just hated it. And I um, had to lose the weight. And I lost the weight, you know, um. Like now, I'm I'm mad that it's cold because I can't ride my bike like I used to. Because I I like to ride the bike because it keeps my metabolism going where I can eat what I wanted what what I want to eat. Um, but that during that time I felt unsexy and I didn't want I did not want to be intimate with you because I didn't feel sexy. I looked at you and I thought you were sexy, but when you touched me, I felt like eh, don't touch me. I'm chubby. Like I, I'm not sexy. You know what I mean? That's how I felt. My face was all big and fat. I just didn't like it. It wasn't the F word. I'm sorry, guys. I have a problem with that word. I just find that it's an offensive <clears throat> word. I mm -hmm. just don't like the word. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Because the what you saw in the mirror was not what I saw when I looked at you. Did you have more pounds than normal? Yeah. Could you have stood a sit-up or two? Sure. But what? I mean... 30 sit-ups. 300 sit-ups, but then... The point is, 
that maybe it's not where you wanted to be, but the extreme that you took it to as far as your body image, crazy to me, absolutely crazy to me. I still found you very sexy and very attractive. And what I think a lot of people need to understand <clears throat> is that attractiveness and sexiness, in my opinion, if, if this much, may only be 50% about what your appearance is. Mm. I think sexiness and attractiveness is about a confidence and a state of mind and how you go about doing the things that you do, you know, how you carry yourself inside and outside of bed. How many times have you guys maybe <clears throat> been attractive, attracted to someone that may not have been what is the general idea of good looking or sexy or whatever? And it could it could have been about the way someone spoke or the way they walked or just you know, their swag or how they dressed or the fact that they were funny or witty or, witty or smart or charismatic, you know, or how many guys have found, how many of you guys have found the same thing in a woman? She may not have been the conventional idea of beautiful, but there was something very special about her that maybe you've only ever seen in her. Do you know what I mean? It's, I think we kind of have to shed the idea that attractiveness or sexiness has to come in a very specific package for both <clears throat> men and women. Beauty exists in all forms and for so many different reasons. And for me, you can't help but be sexy. Like you can't not be sexy. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, and it's funny because I would find little ways to let you know during that time, like, like I can't get enough of you. You know, and I'm sure that you can tell by my reaction to you that I couldn't get enough of you. So even with that, even with the proof being in the pudding, your, in my opinion, dysmorphia <laughs> still overshadowed that. Mm -hmm. Like here you have the facts right in front of you. This is how my wife reacts to me. And it's not a joke. I can see like this is plain as day. But yet I'm still going to feel this way because I choose to feel this way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so I think that when people are being sexual and their self image is overshadowing what's going on and they're paying so much attention to that, it's like you just cannot connect to the experience and then your sex life suffers and your enjoyment suffers and people shouldn't be held hostage to that based on a timeline of when they're going to lose the weight or when they're going to firm up or tone up or get that six pack or raise their, their glutes another <clears throat> two inches or, mm -hmm. but you like, you shouldn't be held hostage to that frame of mind or that way of thinking, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and for the, other person in the relationship, I think it's just important to show love and support and um, reinforce all of the good things. So getting back to the email, mm -hmm. you know, body image could be a thing, stress, depression, mm -hmm. everything that's going on with COVID. How long did she say that this has been going on? Uh, I believe it's, uh, she just said the last couple of months. Oh, this has only been going on. For yeah, and I also think months. it's the COVID. It could be financial. Financial, it yeah, could stress. Be all of these these other things, but again, she said that it's not about not being able to get an, an erection. It's about being able to maintain it. So, <clears throat> these are my little, or I don't know if I have tips. Plural. I have like one tip. I have whatever. one tip too. <laughs> That was good. That was good. <laughs> okay, well, I'll offer my one tip and you keep your one tip to yourself. Okay. Um, for me, like even now, when we're being intimate, um, there are telltale signs when the person that you're with is becoming aroused and at the point of ejaculation, um, orgasm. Bust. So 
for me, when that begins to happen, I digress. I stop doing what I'm doing or I slow down what I'm doing. I decrease the stimulation and do something else. I move to another area. I start the stimulation all over again. And I do that as a means to uh, give him, to build up his resistance to the stimulation in a sense. You know, it's like he becomes excited and then it begins to lessen and then he begins to get excited again and then it begins to lessen. So it's kind of like building immunity in a sense to an orgasm. So I feel it kind of strengthens it. So I don't know if we've really talked, talked about this ever before. How does that affect you when I do that? Um, Do you feel as though it builds up your resistance to orgasm? No. I just feel like at any given moment I could erupt. (laughs) It's the truth. I, I, I never thought about it like that. I mean, I just feel like when you do it at any given moment, I can go. Literally, right before you orgasm, it's like, what's that saying? Hard like Rottweiler? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait, where, where'd I get that from? Belly. Oh, from belly. <laughs> okay. From belly. But it's like about to be, you mm-hmm. know, very, very serious. But then, and it's literally like it happens in a matter of seconds. Like seconds. It's happening. It's mm-hmm. happening. I know to the very second when you're about to ejaculate. Mm-hmm. So. When that, within those seconds, I'm like, okay, then I digress. And then I move on to something else. So it physically works because then you are not in that state. Um, look at me. Then you are not in that state anymore. Mm-hmm. And then we bu- I build it up again. And then it's kind of like a, te- a technique. It's kind of like the way that I feel like I kind of finesse you, but mm-hmm. I know your body. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe trying to build up his resistance um, by doing that. So you said what? Well, you're not really gonna be able to do it if he's only it's only two pumps in. I think she said mm-hmm. two pumps in. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe when you're performing oral sex on him, you might have a little bit more control. Um, I don't want to get too graphic, but you know your technique. You would know mm-hmm. what's more pleasurable than other things. So maybe just trying to ascertain some type of control over that. And I'm wondering if they've talked about it. She said that they both know that it's an issue and mm-hmm. both of them kind of shy away from mm-hmm. intimacy as a result of it. If I were you, it's a sensitive topic. Mm-hmm. So maybe I shouldn't be the one to speak on it. They should have a conversation. It should be talked about. It shouldn't be shied away from. Mm-hmm. How do you think the conversation should go as to not offend him, emasculate him, or make him feel some type of way. I mean, they already had the conversation. I think they should just go to the. Did doctor. they have that conversation? Yeah, I mean, they both know. They, they. No, no, no. She said they know. She yeah. said they shy away from. Yeah, but if sex. They I don't recall. I could be mistaken, but I don't recall you said um, you reading that they had a conversation. No, but she made Am it I seem wrong? like no. They, but if he nuts fast, I mean, they know. But I think the the best doesn't bet is, mean that they spoke about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the a best hard bet, conversation to have. I think the best bet would be go to the doctor. I think that conversation is one of those conversations like, hey, babe, I know what's going on. Let's go to the urologist, make sure everything's okay. And I think have that conversation from there. Uh, I think have the conversation from a medically, a medical place opposed to a not pleasing place. It's an it's a easier conversation, in my opinion. What do you mean a not pleasing place? Um, to say that let's go to the doctor and check it out opposed to, you know, you come fast and I don't like it. Okay, so who said the conversation would have to go like that? No, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. But that's why I would say, let's, hey, babe, let's go to the doctor. Be concerned. Let's see what's going on with your health to make sure everything's okay. And then from there, once you find those details or the results, then you have the conversation. But I would start with, let's go to the doctor and let's, you know, I'm concerned. I want to make sure everything's okay. Um, there's so much things going on in this world, uh, whether it's cancer, whether it's this, whether it's that. Let's just make sure everything is fine. And then from there, have that conversation. I understand why you would go that route. I disagree, though, Um, because if it is something like body image or stress um, or the plight of COVID or something like that, and Mm -hmm. he's distracted or 
he can't focus or he's preoccupied with those thoughts, I think that that could be covered in a conversation. Yeah, but I it don't... doesn't necessarily have to be something that's physiological that is causing. So I think that you kind of try to narrow down what it can be before you take that trip to the doctor. Because if not, it just seems like avoidance. No, I think they should because they already tried pills. They tried a whole bunch of other things they said. But I think a doctor will be able to say what she says and it doesn't seem embarrassing. A doctor is going to be more concerning. Like, hey, well, you know, did you think about stress or is it this or is it that? And I think that, I mean, me personally, I would rather have a conversation with a doctor to make sure everything is okay and then have that conversation. Then I feel like my wife's telling me that, you know, I'm not pleasing her. That's just me. Well, I think that your opinion is what would really count because mm -hmm. you're the man. So you would know how it would make mm -hmm. a man feel by um, coming to him mm -hmm. in that way. But that's what I would do. Mm. Wouldn't it suggest that they already saw a doctor if they have pills already? I mean, you can't just go to Rite Aid and get Viagra. There's a million and one different pills out there. I mean, they didn't have to get Viagra or Levitra. They could have got gas station pills. They could have got Blue Chew. They could have got. <laughs> I'm sure there's some pills at Walgreens, you know, that man could have got some so, pills. Oh, so there are just a bunch of pills out there. I'm sure. You... I'm sure they can get pills from somewhere. I mean, I didn't know if Blue Chews was a pill. No, that's a, that's a real pill. Blue Chews sounds like it's like a tobacco type. No, Blue Chews. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So you say, let's just mm -hmm. go to the doctor and see what's going on. All right. I like it. All right. Like well. It. So now I'll let you off the hook. All right. Well, you can I'm, start to wrap up now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to sleep. Well, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. And I want to let you guys know that my car show is this Saturday. All right. Um, and what I want to do for all our listeners, don't tell anybody. Uh, I want to let you guys into the car show for free. All right. So if you listen to the Casey Crew podcast, only you guys don't tell nobody. Uh, just email Mercedes at DJ assistant at Gmail. And Saturday, this Saturday is my car show. She will send you guys a link where you can check out the car show for free. So shh, don't tell nobody. And that's brought to you by the floor expert. Shout to the floor expert, Eric. He uh, puts the hardwood floor in all of our flooring. So we appreciate you for sponsoring. At the floor expert. Mm -hmm. Also the credit dude. Um, why you look at me? Because that's what I do when we're sitting here. Oh, uh, he's the one that will fix your credit. If you need your credit fix. Make sure you contact him. Now is the time. Uh, interest rates are low. Houses are flying. So you can probably get a good house and a good deal. And the credit shoots you up. We'll give you the best interest rates. All right. So shout to you for sponsoring. Also shout to Lincoln Tech. We appreciate you. And Top Gear uh, Porsche in New Jersey for uh, allowing us to use your space. So thank you guys so much. So email Mercedes at DJNVAssistant at Gmail. Um, she's not here, so she's going to see a bunch of emails and not know where they came from. But um, enjoy the car show. Enjoy it with your family. 